so hi everyone a uh, very very good evening to everybody good evening to all the dear dear bachas so it's a pleasure to see you back live on the youtube channel and it is going to be for an academic session today right so so happy to see all of you and excited as well to teach so med school live is an initiative which has been going on for last 3 weeks we are doing some super high yielding sessions and uh, today also we have planned a high yielding session for everybody okay so before i start the session uh, are you all going to be active in the chat box yes can you give me a thumbs up are you all going to be active in the chat box right so i would appreciate if everyone is active and what exactly are we going to do today in the med school live now uh, the purpose of med school live is to cover something which could be important uh, for every exam right which means today's topic uh, is going to be important for every exam now what do i mean which means a if you are a final year student yes it is going to be important for your professional exams If you are appearing for INICT, this is a must-do topic. Okay, so please understand this. If you are appearing for INICT, this is a must-do topic. It is something which has been asked over and over again in INICT exams. If you are a NEET PG or an FMG aspirant, the same holds true for you. Only the way of asking the questions has changed. But apart from that, the topic in all remains, you know, important for every exam. also through this topic and what is that going to be so today we are going to discuss a very basic but a very important topic so we are going to talk about partograph and we are also going to talk about the next generation partograph do you know what is the next generation partograph Yes so the next generation partograph is nothing but the other name for labor care guide right which is the newest version given by the WHO so partograph originally also was given by WHO and the labor guide care guide is also given by WHO so we're going to talk about both and what is going to be the goal okay so we must definitely know what should be the goal of today's class So goal number one, we are definitely going to cover the PYQs asked on this topic in various exams. Okay, we are also going to cover probable MCQs for the upcoming exams, and we are definitely going to cover certain concepts. And that is why I said I need you all to be active in the chat box. So we are going to talk about concepts and definitely yes, application of. concepts yes so is everyone ready so this is going to be the goal for today's med school live i want everyone to be active and responding uh, it's going to be a english lecture so hindi english and a mixture of the two i hope everybody is okay absolutely yes and in the end i'll try my best to motivate you to make you feel confident about the topic it's always a pleasure to come back and teach you all it is something that we really really enjoy doing this is something that really peps us our life okay so um, let's get started now before i get started i want to take you back to uh, something which was an age old partograph given in 1950s yes can you identify okay can you identify what is this so as i said this is one of the oldest partographs that came up in the year 1950s and that is when you know uh, people actually started plotting uh, you know uh, labor and monitoring of labor right so can anybody tell me what is this and there is a reason why uh, you know i am even talking about this which is an older version because it is a pyq so you should be ready an inict so you should be ready for this even neat pg has previously asked this older version once okay uh bhanu priya i will try but it's a good idea to write these are some basic concepts so if you write simultaneously it's only going to be in the form of points it will be like a good revision for you it will stay with you for a longer time and then i'll try and you know give you the um, 
the PDF as well. But I would appreciate if you write because it helps you retain things for a longer time. Nahi to aap sirf PDF collectors ban jate ho, okay? So let's try and do this. Absolutely right. So Nitish Rai is right. That's the first answer we got. So this is the Friedman's curve, right? So this is the Friedman's curve. So what he did was he plotted uh, labor of various women and then he extrapolated and he got this S-shaped curve, right? So, this is actually the Friedman's curve. Now, there are certain labelings that are already there because I need you to know about this and then we go to the newer version and the latest version as well, okay? Now, I am sure before I go on to this graph, I have to ask you some basic questions. Needless to say, they have been recent exam questions as well. So, if you talk about labour, do you all remember that there is a first stage of labour? Yes. So, who is going to tell me what is the first stage of labor? It has been a recent PYQ, NEET PG, recent PYQ, INICT. So, when do you say first stage of labor begins? So, it begins from true labor pains. Yes. So, from the onset of true labor pains. Yes. Up till what time? Up till full dilatation of the cervix. Yes. So, up till full dilatation of cervix is what is the first stage of labor. Perfect. Now, can you tell me what is full dilatation? So, something which is very, very simple, it is 10 centimeters, right? So, 10 centimeters is full dilatation of cervix. Now, can you tell me when we say first stage of labor and I am sure because I want to keep it as an active recall as well. Perfect. Who is going to tell me what are the two phases of first stage of labor? So, yes, there is a latent phase of labor and there is an active phase of labor, right? So, there is a latent phase of labor and there is an active phase of labor. Now, Friedman's curve actually also shows us both these stages. Can you all appreciate this? So, on one axis, we have cervical dilatation. And on one axis, we have time, yes? And in the Friedman's curve, the latent phase is also included. Can you appreciate this, right? When the progress is really slow. So, this is the latent phase of labor, okay? And then there is a phase which is called as the acceleration phase. Can you all see that, right? So, there is a phase which is called as the acceleration phase. Now, acceleration phase, Friedman said, lies somewhere between 3 to 4 centimeters. And he said that the acceleration phase is the phase that joins the latent phase with the phase of maximum slope, right? This is when the slope of the curve is maximum and there is a rapid change in the cervical dilatation, right? So, phase of maximum slope lies between 4 centimeters to 9 centimeters. This is the phase of maximum, uh, you know, cervical dilatation rate. And finally, there is a deceleration phase in the active phase of labor itself, right? So, there is a latent phase and there is an active phase. And the active phase is further divided into an acceleration phase, a phase of maximum slope and a deceleration phase. Yes. Now, please remember deceleration phase lies between 9 to 10 centimeters where the rate of cervical dilatation again slows down a little. So, that's why it is called as a deceleration phase. And then if you can appreciate in the Friedman's curve, there was also a plotting of the second stage of labor. So, next question for everybody in the chat box, right? Who is going to tell me what happens in the second stage of labor? So, second stage of labor is after full dilatation of cervix. Do you understand this? Recently, INICT had asked, all are seen in the second stage except. So, cervical dilatation is no longer there because it is already a fully dilated cervix. Okay. So, second stage is after full dilatation of cervix. What is this phase? This is the phase of Yes, birth of the baby, right? So, after full dilatation, the phase where the baby is going to be delivered is what is called as the second stage of labor. Is that clear to everyone? 
perfect okay so please remember dilatation would no longer be a component of the second stage so these are very basic things so this is what is actually the original graph which was given by friedman and then we realized that this is not an up to date and or things evolved and things changed but apart from identifying that there is a latent phase there is an active phase and there is a second stage of labor in the friedman curve what are the questions they ask you yes are you ready for a pyq now everyone yes now please remember the slower part as i said is what is the latent phase then when it is steeping up okay that is what is the active phase and then in the second stage it's already fully dilated so there will just be delivery of the baby now based on this this is the graph that came in INICT exam so it is an INICT PYQ the exams are coming up so we have to know what we have to mark so initially we were using the friedman's curves to identify what problem is it going to be okay now just by knowing the basics that i have told you that uh, the slower part is the latent phase the slope is the active phase right now can you tell me just by comparing it with the previous graph can you tell me what would be graph a okay let's see how many of you can give me the correct answer because that's what we need to know for exams in case the question is repeated we must be able to answer it so what would be graph a bacha so graph a is the red line is what is showing you the abnormal part right so we are showing you abnormal progress and the abnormal progress is shown by the red part right perfect very good so when we see here in the graph a the red part which is prolonged is the latent phase can you all appreciate that because i said the slower version or the horizontal part is what is the latent phase right so what would you label graph a as suppose they give you the graph and they will say what does a represent so what do you think a represents excellent yes akash has given the correct answer so a will represent prolonged latent phase is that clear to everyone yes was everyone able to reach to the answer okay so based on friedman's curves graph a represents prolonged latent phase perfect good going now let's look at graph number b again the red line or the dotted line tells you this is the abnormal part of the labor so now who is going to tell me what do you think graph b denotes can you tell me what does graph b denotes is it the latent phase or is it the active phase it is the active phase because it's showing you the slope right so which means what would this be now yes this is going to be a prolonged active phase excellent very good <laughs> somebody called momo has given the answer so b is going to be the prolonged active phase great i can see that everybody can answer and now we move to the one that really came in the exam so they showed us this graph and they asked us what does graph c represent what does graph c represent so look at this in the graph c we are showing you the abnormal part which was supposed to be a slope it is in the active phase and it was supposed to be a slope can you all appreciate but is it a slope here or is it again becoming a horizontal line it is again becoming a horizontal line so that is why it is abnormal it was supposed to be a slope right so when you see a horizontal line in the active phase excellent wonderful so all of you are brilliant bachas that means the graph c is going to represent arrest of active phase okay so graph c here represents the arrest of active phase which was the inict pyq right and here are the labelings so graph a as we said is prolonged latent phase graph b is prolonged active phase and graph c is what is called as arrest of active phase perfect now some of you were answering graph a as arrest of latent phase is that right or is that wrong wrong so please remember this bachcha in the latent phase theek hai latent phase mein 
we do not make a diagnosis of arrest. Is that clear to everyone? In the latent phase, there is no diagnosis of arrest, bacha. Theek hai? In the latent phase, we can say prolonged but not arrest. Arrest is a terminology which is either used for active phase of labor or it is used for the second stage of labor. Is that clear? Give me a thumbs up if that is clear to you. Yes, we will talk about definition of arrest very soon. But as of now, I just want you to know that if you get a graph, okay, of Friedman's curves, which is like the really older version, what could be the question and what are you supposed to answer? Yes, very good. And when we talk about prolonged latent phase, what is the cutoff in nulli paras now? Can you tell me? When we say prolonged latent phase, what is bacha the cutoff in nulli paras and what is the cutoff in multi paras? So, in nulli paras, we call it prolonged if it is lasting for more than 20 hours. No, we are talking about latent phase bacha. Okay, Vivan, we are talking about latent phase bacha. So, nulli paras may we will say it is prolonged if it is lasting for more than 20 hours. These are all PYQs and they are very, very important. Okay. And when do you say for multi paras it is prolonged? Okay, some of you are answering three hours, that is second stage arrest. Okay, so don't get confused, bachas. So, multi paras may what is the cutoff if it is lasting for more than? 14 hours, okay, if it is lasting for more than 14 hours, yes, is that understandable to everyone, okay, and remember that, uh, you know, generally we have different cutoffs for average durations also, okay, for example, what is the average duration of latent phase in multi paras, it is around 8 hours, okay, and what is the average duration in nulli paras, it is around 12 hours, is that clear? So, these are the cutoffs which we, you should know. They have been asked in the exam. They can be asked again. So, everyone clear with the Friedman's curve? Yes. Can we move on to the next one now? Okay. Perfect. Yes, that's right. Average 8 hours for multi and 12 hours for nulli paras. Great. Now, let's move ahead. So, Friedman's were the older curves. They are no longer used now. Then for the major part on our labor practice, we were actually using the modified WHO partograph. Yes. So now we are going to talk about the modified WHO partograph. Sabse pehle, do you know how is modified WHO partograph different from Friedman? So who gave modified WHO partograph? This was actually given by people called as Philpot and Castle. That's not a PYQ. They won't really ask that. Okay. But Philpot and Castle actually gave the concept of modified WHO partograph. Now, remember the first very important thing here. Okay. Now, when they talk about modified WHO partograph, are we now plotting latent phase of labor or no? So, quickly, I want everyone to answer. Do we plot latent phase? The answer is no, okay. Plotting will begin only in the active phase, okay. So, in the modified WHO partograph, the plotting begins only in the active phase of labor. We are not plotting the latent phase of labor. Second very important question. Based on modified WHO partograph, when do we say active phase begins? So, if you get a direct question on the partograph, whenever they say on the partograph, you have to take it as modified WHO partograph because it is most likely a PYQ, right? So, if they ask you on the uh, partograph, when do you begin plotting? Then what is your answer? When do you begin plotting on the partograph? What is your answer? Yes, the answer has to be 4 centimeters. Perfect. Okay, the answer has to be 4 centimeters. That's when we say is the active phase of labor based on modified WHO partograph. Great. The next question. The third important thing is in the modified WHO partograph, Philpott and Castle actually introduced two lines. Yes, and I'm sure you know those lines. One is called as alert line. 
and the other is called as action line right so there's an alert line there's an action line which are already drawn on the partograph we'll see it and we will do the application based questions as well okay now some quick questions which are again pyqs and especially anyone who's targeting ini set neat pg fmg these are super important mcqs they're easy they're scoring so don't do them wrong okay question number one what is the slope of alert line can you tell me what is the slope of alert line have patience i will clear all your doubts by the end of the session you will not be left with even a single doubt i won't go i won't leave you unless i clear your doubts yes tell me what is the slope of alert line anybody so it is again a line like this so it has a slope so what is the slope it is 1 centimeter per hour perfect yes it is 1 centimeter per hour that is the slope of the alert line what about action line action line has the same slope but what is different is this is made 4 hours to the right of alert line okay so action line is a line which will have it says parallel to the alert line okay it is parallel to the alert line and it is four hours to the right of alert line is that clear again important ini wale har depth mein ja ke question puchte hain and these have all been the options in ini exams okay so it is four hours to the right we will see because there are some gross mistakes that some of you really make in the exam okay now please remember alert line is going to go from where to where it goes from 4 centimeters to 10 centimeters okay the alert line is going to go from 4 centimeters until 10 centimeters with a slope of 1 centimeter per, per hour are you ready for the next question okay can you tell me what is the relevance of knowing that the slope is 1 centimeter per hour who is going to tell me the application of this fact it is a factual question but i want to know why should we clinicians know this so what is the application so please remember this is the minimum rate of cervical dilatation okay this is the minimum rate of cervical dilatation which is considered as normal progress of labor so if the progress of labor is normal the rate should be at least how much one centimeter per hour okay do you understand this is the minimum rate of dilatation which will be considered as normal progress now what is the mistake you students do let me ask you what would be the answer if they ask you what is the minimum rate of cervical dilatation for normal labor in multi paras let me see who will give me the answer suppose you go for the exam and they ask you what should be the rate of minimum rate of cervical dilatation in multi paras to call it as normal labor then what is the answer let me see who gives the answer sabse pehle you all have to be active that's how we learn okay so somebody is saying 0 0.5 that could be one option somebody is saying 1.2 centimeters somebody is saying primary is one multi is 1.5 i get another answer is 1.3 and everybody is wrong you're all wrong that's what i said so many of you are doing making mistakes in basics and your ini ct exams are asking more and more of basics they're actually going down to basics more than your neat pg people right so please remember the answer will remain as one centimeter per hour aap log kya bata rahe ho aap bata rahe ho average rate of cervical dilatation in a primary average rate of cervical dilatation in multi which is 1.2 and 1.5 that's not what the question is asking do you understand this the question is asking what is the minimum rate to consider the progress of labor is normal the answer remains as one centimeter for both primary and multi is this right have you all got it right because i don't want any bacha who is attending this session live to do it wrong in the real exam is that understandable so when we ask you minimum rate 
the answer is not different for primary and multis clear to everybody yes so yes what you were answering is this what is the average rate of cervical dilatation aap log ye answer kar rahe ho and then yes they have been pyqs as well as separate one liners so in primary it is 1.2 cm per hour and in multis it is approximately 1.5 cm per hour maine bola by the end of the session i will ensure that anybody doing this session live does not have any doubts about partograph and does not have to revise this topic before ini exams that is my goal for your exam i want this to be a final session and we are done with partograph and anything related to it that might come in the exam okay chalo so they are also important they are pyq so average rate in primary is 1.2 average rate in multi is 1.5 but the minimum requirement to say whether it is normal labor or not is 1 cm per hour for both clear let's move forward now so now coming to the modified who partograph so i'm going to show it to you i will enlarge also and then again i will show you but as of now let's understand some very basic things again focusing on various exams and pyqs okay so this is a typical example of modified who partograph theek hai are yaar janvi tasalli rakho i am here i'll answer every query bachu theek hai now you all should know that through this partograph which is a graphical record right we are going to monitor the mother also and we are going to monitor the baby also right so there are certain maternal indicators that we use and there are certain fetal indicators that we use right now again these have been pyqs in the ini ct exams and in neat pg also what all information do you get from the partograph so quickly can you tell me what all maternal indicators are we seeing through the partograph so do we get the patient identification data yes so the first thing is we will get the patient identification data which includes name age parity time of admission right so we will get the identification data of the women second very very important do we monitor vitals of the patient yes we will monitor the vitals of the patient as well so please remember we will monitor heart rate blood pressure and temperature okay so heart rate blood pressure temperature now remember these things what is the interval of measuring heart rate it should be measured every 30 minutes or pulse rate every 30 minutes what about blood pressure in temperature every 4 hours right so blood pressure and temperature every 4 hours magar pulse rate kitne interval pe measure karna hai betu yes pulse rate every 30 minutes i'm telling you all these details once you do it with me you don't have to revise this topic again for ini and you will see lots of pyqs there okay now quickly third thing we will also monitor the time of rupture of membranes so if she has come to us with ruptured membranes or if they rupture in front of us we have to mention that we will definitely monitor cervical dilatation we will definitely monitor uterine contractions right cervical dilatation uterine contractions apart from that we will monitor or write drugs and fluids that are given to the patient and something about her urine as well do we monitor anything in the urine yes or no yes so these are all important things that are given or the information that we get from the partograph about the female i am talking about the maternal indicators right so before i go to dilatation and contractions what do we monitor in the urine so please remember we are supposed to comment upon proteins ketones or acetone and volume so every time the patient passes we are supposed to 
write the protein urea is there or not, ketone urea is there or not and what is the volume of urine output. Is that clear to everyone? Drugs you all understand oxytocin, how much oxytocin and how much is the drop rate we are supposed to mention that. Coming to the important aspects in this. Now first talking about cervical dilatation. How frequently are you supposed to see cervical dilatation? So, 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 ke answer karoge, jaldi nahi hai koi. Thik hai? So, how frequently, bachas, will you see cervical dilatation? Quickly. Every four hours, which means the other way of asking this question is, how frequently would you do a PV examination? So, PV examination ka general answer is every four hours. Yes, if you find labor is abnormal, I might do it every two hourly as well. But when asked as a general MCQ, you have to answer it. We will monitor the cervical dilatation every four hours. Is that clear to everyone? Perfect. Coming to how do we plot the cervical dilatation? Uh, do you know the symbol we use for cervical dilatation? We use a cross. Right? So, the symbol we use is a cross, yes, is what is used to plot the cervical dilatation. Now, coming to the next very important question. Suppose a patient comes to you, she is 5 centimeters dilated. Okay, listen to me very carefully and answer. Suppose a patient comes to you and she is 5 centimeters dilated. My first question is, do you start plotting the partograph or no? So answer one by one, okay? She comes to you in labor room, you've done a PV, she is five centimeters dilated, do you start plotting or don't start plotting? So simple question, yes. Because she is in the active phase, we have to start plotting, okay? So the first question is easy. The second question is, where do you start plotting? Very, very important, it has been a PYQ. So, can you tell me where do you start plotting? So, do you plot 5 centimeters here? So, I am drawing one cross here or do you plot here? So, there is a point A and there is a point B. I want to know from you which of these two points is the correct one, point A or point B. My patient is 5 centimeters dilated. Okay, I am going to start plotting. Do I plot it at point A or do I plot it on point B? Let's see what are you going to answer. Okay, so again, so many of you are answering it incorrectly. Again, it's a PYQ, it's a very important MCQ and it's very important to actually plot the graph and even to understand the graph. The answer is not A. That is incorrect. So, please remember you have to always start plotting on the alert line. Is that clear? So, A wale bache ab ye galti dubara nahi karenge. Do you get it? Sare mujhe batao, will you repeat this mistake? No, please don't. It is a PYQ. You always begin plotting on the alert line. Is that clear? So, that is the next important thing. Okay. Always begin plotting on alert line. No, it is not to the left, it is not to the right, it is on the alert line. Okay, they are wrong, Janvi. That is why, Janvi, you have to understand you have to learn from the specialist. Okay, someone who is from the subject, who knows depth of the subject, and who is not just simply googling things and teaching you. Okay. So, please understand this. That's absolutely wrong. Okay? Dobara galti nahi karna bacha. Right? So, cervical dilatation we will see every 4 hours. Okay? Which means PV is done every 4 hourly. Symbol used is X and we will always begin plotting on the alert line. Is that clear to everybody? Great. Perfect. Now, let's begin forward. Um, let's move forward now. Okay, what about uterine contractions? So, now tell me, at what frequency will you measure uterine contractions? Okay, at what frequency will you measure the uterine contractions? Every 30 minutes. 
okay at what frequency every 30 minutes we will start record or uh, monitoring the uterine contractions okay next question can you tell me what are you supposed to measure what are you supposed to measure you are supposed to measure number of contractions okay so number of contractions but you have to see number of contractions in 10 minutes which means you have to monitor the patient for 10 minutes and you have to see what is the number of contractions she is getting in those 10 minutes right so please remember on the partograph one square is equal to one contraction is that understandable for cervical dilatation one square is equal to one centimeter okay please ye dhyan rakho ye sab pyqs hain so in the area of cervical dilatation one square is equal to one centimeter in the area of uterine contractions one square is equal to one contraction right so if my patient is getting two contractions i will plot two squares if she is getting three contractions i will plot three squares if she is getting four i will plot four squares right now coming to what else are we supposed to know how do we plot the contraction so there are three ways of doing it okay so if you plot a contraction with dots so one square with dot what does it mean it tells us the duration of the contraction so this is lasting less than 20 seconds is that understandable this is lasting less than 20 seconds okay uh, Shravan is confused. Shravan, every 30 minutes you have to plot the contractions. But to plot, you have to see how many contractions is she getting in 10 minutes, bacha. So monitoring has to be done for 10 minutes. You will count the contractions, then you will plot. You will repeat the process every 30 minutes. Is that clear? Okay. If you plot it with diagonal lines, Okay, if you plot it with diagonal lines, it means it is lasting for 20 to 40 seconds. And if you draw a solid square, okay, if you draw a solid square, it means it is lasting for more than 40 seconds. Who is going to tell me out of these three, okay, out of these three, which one would mean adequate contractions? Can you tell me which one would mean adequate contractions, Bacha? yes so very important please remember only solid plot contractions are considered as adequate contractions okay so they are considered as adequate contractions now are you ready for the next question what could be the maximum number of contractions that my patient should get in 10 minutes what should be the maximum number of contractions that my patient should get in 10 minutes. Who's going to tell me? So, you know, if you look at the area of contractions, look at this. Okay, so I'm highlighting it for you. There are numbers going from 1 to 5. Can you all appreciate? Can you tell me why is it 5? Why is not 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? So, 5 kyu hai? Because the maximum number of contractions in 10 minutes should be 5 not more than that okay so maximum number of contractions should be 5 who is going to tell me okay 5 in 10 minutes who is going to tell me if there are more than 5 contractions in 10 minutes okay what is this indicating what is the clinical application I repeat, if my patient has more than 5 contractions in 10 minutes, what does it indicate? Yes, it indicates hyperstimulation. Okay, it indicates hyperstimulation and it is bad for the baby. So, quickly, as soon as you see this number of contractions more than 5, look at the fetal heart rate. It will cause distress. So, hyperstimulation is associated with fetal distress okay if it is not associated with fetal distress number of contractions are more than five we simply say tachy systole okay so tachy systole is 
more than 5 contractions in 10 minutes. Hypersystimulation is tachycystole plus fetal distress. Okay. And as I said, that is why it is bad. Suppose we give you this and we ask you what is the next step? What do you think you should do? So, I want you to learn the application also, not just the mugging up part, right? So, quickly tell me. Suppose we are saying there is fetal distress, there is tachycystole. What should you do? What should you do? Immediately, you have to stop oxytocin. Do you understand this? You have to stop the oxytocin drip that is going, okay? Yes, you will also turn her to the left lateral side, give her oxygen by mask, but very importantly, stop oxytocin. Is that clear to everyone? Perfect. No, 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 no LSCL, bacha. That is exactly why I am discussing this. A lot of you answer it as take the patient up for cesarean the moment you see fetal distress. That is incorrect. If there is hyperstimulation, there is no CS right now, okay? You make her left lateral, give her oxygen, stop oxytocin. If required, okay, now answer the next level MCQ. If required, which drug can you give her? Okay, so you have answered it correct. If there is hyperstimulation, the management is stop oxytocin. Okay, if this is not helping, now my answer question is, which drug can you give to this patient? Let's see who can answer the uh, things correctly. So, what I am doing is, I am going from basic level to the highest possible level, right? So, I start with basic level MCQ, I build your concept and then I ask you the highest possible thing that they could ask. Excellent, very good. So, Subhash is right, Dr. Jain is right, the answer is terbutaline which means you have to or you may even have to give a tocolytic right and these days the most common one that we use is terbutaline is that clear to everyone yes so you have to answer with respect to what they are asking right and don't simply answer cesarean section when you see fetal distress yes if after doing these things the fetal heart rate doesn't come back to normal, yes, then we will do a cesarean, but not right now. Cesarean will be one of the options, but not, it's not the answer. Is that okay? Everyone, give me a thumbs up if you've got this right. Chalo, should we move forward now? Now, coming on to fetal indicators, yes? So, I have covered what are the maternal indicators given in the partograph. Now, you will tell me what are the fetal indicators that we use in the partograph. But che, retodrine is a theoretical answer. They are same category drugs, but retodrine is no longer used now. Now we use terbutaline because of a, a lot of side effects of retodrine. Theoretically, yes, even retodrine can be used, but nowadays we, as I said, we use terbutaline. Okay, chalo, perfect. Fetal indicators that we plot on the partograph. So, most importantly, fetal heart rate. Okay. So, most importantly, fetal heart rate. What else? We will also monitor the descent of head. Yes. So, descent of head. Apart from this, we will monitor the or comment on the amniotic fluid. What else? There is one more thing. We will also plot in case there is any molding. Yes, is that clear to everyone? So, fetal heart rate, descent of head, amniotic fluid and molding. Now, quickly answer the following questions. Question number one. At what interval should you be monitoring the FHR? At what interval should you be monitoring FHR? Yes, so this is monitored every 30 minutes, okay, it is monitored every 30 minutes, which means in the area of fetal heart rate, okay, in the area of FHR, 1 square is equal to 30 minutes. Now comes the confuser, okay. Now in the area of cervical dilatation and descent of head, do you know there is a time? Look at this. So, this is the area where we are plotting the dilatation and the descent and underneath this there is a time column. Now, tell me 
which is actually a INI set PYQ, they have asked one square, okay, is equal to how much time in the partograph? What will be your answer? In the partograph, one square or big square corresponds to how much time? Who is going to tell me? Quickly. Yes, I will explain everything Priya, don't worry. I will talk about molding as well, one by one, bacha. So, yes, it is very, very essential because so many of you are doing it wrong and as I said, it is an INI set P by Q. One square or one big square in the partograph is equal to one hour. Is that understandable? It is equal to one hour. So, there are actually 24 squares, 12 on the top and then 12 on uh, others at the bottom of it. So, a total of 24. Do you understand this? So, please ye galti mat kariyega. Okay. One big square, especially in the area of cervical dilatation and descent, one square is equal to one hour. Only in the column of fetal heart rate, okay, it is one small square and that corresponds to actually 30 minutes. Is that understandable? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you will not do it wrong. Yes, everybody with me? Okay, perfect. So, going back to the fetal indicators. So, fetal heart rate every 30 minutes. I am sure you all know the normal value 120 to 160 beats per minute. You know, uh, it is okay. Some textbooks write it as 110 to 160 as well, but generally, most of us will take it as 120 to 160 beats per minute, especially in reference to the partograph. So, we will take less than 120 as brady and less than 100 as severe bradycardia. Okay, is that clear to everybody? Okay, now let us move forward. Descent of head. Next question. How do you plot descent of head? What is the, uh, what is the symbol that you use? So, what is the symbol? that we use the symbol is going to be a o okay the symbol for descent of head is going to be o or a zero you know whatever you want to say but we say an o okay now comes the next important thing a lot of you don't know how to plot the descent or what this means do you see this graph so for the descent of head we go from 5 to 0 do you know how we see descent of head? How do we see descent of head? So now, please remember, anybody who has done my classes would actually know this, okay? Do you remember that I have taught you the rule of fifths to measure the descent of head? Do you remember the rule of fifth, everyone? Yes. So let me ask you an example. Suppose your patient comes at 5 centimeter dilatation, okay, and her head is 3 by 5 palpable. Sabse pehle, I want to ask you, what is the meaning of 3 by 5? Sare galat answer kar rahe ho, theek hai? To ab dhyan se sun lo ese liye. What do you understand by 3 by 5? Now, we use the fingers of our hand. And the numerator, okay, the numerator tells us how many parts are above the pelvic brim, okay. So, this means three parts are above pelvic brim, okay. If I write 2 by 5, it means two parts are above pelvic brim. If I write 1 by 5, it means one part is above pelvic brim. Now, please remember this. 2 by 5 corresponds to engaged head, okay. 2 by 5 corresponds to engaged head. Do you know that in partograph, this is what we plot because all of you are answering something else. So, please understand this. We are supposed to see how many fifths are above the pelvic brim. So, if it is 3 by 5, where will I plot? Do you know this? Suppose she comes and it is 3 by 5. This is where I will plot. Do you understand now with a circle? Is that understandable? So many of you were talking about ischial spines. Yes, 
we will see the station with ischial spines also but what is the fallacy if you see only by a PV exam and not by a PA exam if there is a big caput okay if there is a big caput you will not be able to feel the station correctly because of the swelling on the head do you understand this now quickly tell me if on entry she is 5 by 5 where would you have plotted or let's say she would have been 4 by 5 or 2 by 5 then we would plot on the corresponding numbers so please remember the plotting of descent of head is by rule of fifths so 0 by 5 ka kya matlab hoga so patient has now become 0 by 5 it means the entire head has gone inside the station would be plus 3 and the head is about to come out do you understand this so please remember this the plotting has to be with the O and it is dependent on rule of fifths is that clear yes so yes if 5 by 5 it would go on the alert line yes but I didn't want to create confusion so I gave you as 3 by 5 is that understandable by, by everyone so please don't do descent of head wrong but yes I want to still ask you because this is again an aims P by Q so quickly tell me is chill spine corresponds to what station station 0 and this also means the head is engaged so please remember when you say head engaged on a PV exam it means station is 0 when you say head is engaged on a PA exam with rule of fifth it corresponds to 2 by 5 2 by 5 ka matlab hai, 2 parts are above pelvic brim 3 parts of the head have gone inside is that clear Thik hai? so 2 parts have are above the brim 3 parts have gone inside Thik hai bacha? clear to everybody so corresponding to ischial spine is 0 station which also corresponds to engaged quickly just to ensure you are not doing any basics wrong again a PYQ what would minus 3 mean and what would plus 2 mean so if the exam says which is again PYQ okay what would minus 3 mean what would plus 2 mean minus ka matlab hota hai above ischial spine not below okay some of you are doing gross mistakes I don't know because of what reason but these are very basic things we shouldn't be doing them wrong plus ka matlab hota hai below ischial spines number ka matlab hota hai centimeter so when you say minus 3 it means 3 centimeters above ischial spine when you say plus 2 it means 2 centimeters below ischial spine is that clear to everyone not the brim bache no priya dhyan se minus ka matlab yeah, plus ka matlab, the reference point is ischial spine, not pelvic brim bacha. Okay, so either it is above ischial spine or it is below ischial spine. Is that clear? Okay, we are ready to go forward now. Now, talking about amniotic fluid, yes, can you tell me what are the various symbols we use? So, there is a symbol called as I, which means the membranes are intact. Okay there is a symbol called as b which means the fluid is blood stained okay what is c yes c means clear amniotic fluid what is m m means meconium who is going to tell me what is a but what is a symbol batao a ka kya matlab hai so A means the membranes are ruptured and all amniotic fluid has leaked out. So A actually means absent amniotic fluid. There is no fluid draining. All of it has leaked out. Is that clear? Perfect. We move to the last parameter which was molding. Okay. Now quickly tell me what is molding? So molding is overlapping of the parietal bones which means 
you will no longer be able to feel the sutures when you are doing a PVE exam. Okay. Now, the molding has to be represented as either minus, which means no molding, or in the form of pluses. So, it could be plus 1, it could be plus 2, or plus 3. Please remember, plus 1 means the bones are touching each other. Okay. The parietal bones are touching each other. They are not overlapping. What is plus 2? Plus 2 means? The bones are overlapping but can be manually separated. Okay. And plus 3 means overlapping and cannot be separated. Now, this is the factual part. Who is going to tell me the clinical application of this? Who is going to tell me the clinical application? So, if you see plus 2 or plus 3 molding, okay. So, in the partograph, if you see a plus 2 and plus 3 molding with slow progress of labor. So, if you see this with slow progress of labor, what is the meaning of this? That is what you need to know because if you are able to see that in the exam, you will be, you'll be able to answer the management aspect as well, right? So, if there is plus 2 molding or plus 3 molding and there is slow progress of labor, what does this mean? Excellent. Yes. So, Revati is right, Shama is right, Pranav is right and I am proud of all of you. This is a marker of CPD. This is how NEAT PG asks questions. They give you a graph, they give you some parameters and they ask you the management. Is that understandable, Bacha? So, this means there is an underlying cephalo pelvic disproportion. What can CPD lead to? CPD can lead to arrest of active phase. Okay. So, if the CPD is significant, it can lead to arrest. Now, coming to the next question for all of you. How will you look at the partograph and know whether there is CPD or not? How? By looking at the partograph, you will know, sorry, whether there is arrest or not. So, who is going to tell me what is arrest of active phase? So, very, very important. It's a PYQ. It is also a potential MCQ, NEET PG, INICT, FMG, all exams. Okay. So, arrest kya hota hai? Arrest is no change in cervical dilatation. Please remember, there are two criteria here. So, no change in cervical dilatation for 4 hours with adequate contractions or 6 hours with inadequate contractions. Okay. I will show you the graphs also after this. Once you understand this, I will give you graphs and you will interpret the graph for me. Right. So, with adequate contractions, you have to wait for 4 hours. With inadequate contractions, you have to wait for 6 hours, right? Please understand, we will wait for 4 hours and 6 hours only when the FHR is normal. Agar pehle hi fetal distress ho gaya, do you think you should wait for 4 hours? No. If you are seeing fetal distress at 3 hours, you will have to do an intervention at 3 hours. Is that clear? Right? So, what is the management of arrest? Because NEAT PG SR data. NEAT PG gives you a graph. You have to interpret the graph. They will either ask you the cause or they will ask you the management. If they ask you cause, you have to answer it as CPD. That is the most common cause for arrest. Okay? Although it can be occipito posterior position also. But the single best answer is CPD. That's what NEAT PG asks. Okay. It's an important PYQ as well. If they ask you management, the answer is emergency cesarean. Right. You're going to do an emergency. Yes. An LSCS. So, you're going to do an emergency cesarean section. Is that clear to one, everyone? Okay. So, now these are the parameters that we must know. 
now once we know what all we monitor now we have to see how to interpret the graph so is everyone ready for interpretation and then we go to the labor care guide as well so are you ready for the interpretation okay for the interpretation i want you to look at this graph of your patient so there is a graph that i am showing to you okay look at all the parameters one by one do you see the fetal heart rate it is in the normal range yes now do you see the plotting of cervical dilatation the patient came to us at 4 cm yes the patient came to us at 4 cm so that's where we have plotted and her graph remains on the alert line yes her graph remains on the alert line now look at descent she came at 3 by 5 okay 3 by 5 three parts were palpable above the brim but she has gone to 0 by 5 in how many hours has she undergone full dilatation so 1 hour 2 3 4 5 6 so within 6 hours she has undergone full dilatation and delivered yes so now what do you think this graph represents because a lot of you do this wrong if i ask you theoretically the graph lies on the alert line yes then if i ask you what do you think it is then you answer it incorrectly so tell me tell me yes actually 5 hours because she came at this point so tell me normal or not normal normal so this is actually a normal graph so please remember this if the patient graph lies on the alert line or it lies to the left of alert line then this indicates normal progress were you all able to see that it was normal progress yes look at the contractions yes look at the contraction part also here so earlier she was getting four contractions eventually she started getting five adequate contractions in 10 minutes so solid colors five four squares then five squares yes so if it lies on the alert line or to the left of alert line it is normal progress so should you do any intervention the answer is no if it is normal progress we are not going to do any intervention understandable are you ready for the next graph everyone are you ready for the next graph okay now you will do it yourself you will tell me the diagnosis of this graph there is a graph see it the way i have taught you go one by one do you see the fetal heart rate it is normal yes now let us look at the dilatation she came to us at 4 centimeters dilatation for first 2 hours she remained at 4 centimeters okay that is why the graph has gone where tell me graph has gone to the right of alert line then she went from 4 to 6 yes she went from 4 to 6 and the graph started touching the action line but then it went okay yes so which means the graph has gone on to the right of alert line which means normal progress or slow progress slow progress right so this is a graph of slow progress of the active phase now i want to know from you what term do we use for slow progress what term will you use they will call it as dystocia they will confuse you with the words slow progress will be same as dystocia will be same as protracted active phase these are terms only made to confuse you bachas but i'm sure you will now not get confused right so slow progress is same as dystocia is same as protracted labor is that good for everyone yes okay what does 
the graph if it goes right of alert line what does it indicate so if it goes to the right of alert line it means the patient should be referred to fru so if she is being seen at a smaller place she has to be referred to the first referral unit fru because this is slow progress but what will you do if she is already in the fru let's say she is in a big hospital then will you send her to aims imagine sending every patient to aims because they have slow progress no. so if she is at a lower center you refer her to fru if she is already at, at fru then what do you do if she is already at fru then what do you do more intensive monitoring okay we do more intensive monitoring yes understandable okay if it is slow progress ka graph and you go for neat pg and they ask you management what do you do what do you do majority of time the cause for slow progress is inadequate contractions right so majority of times the cause is inadequate contractions which means what should be the answer augmentation what is the management therefore augmentation is that understandable the cause is inadequate contractions and what we do is augmentation we can augment even at 2 hours we may not wait for 4 hours right what is the first way of augmentation? So, sometimes they ask you the sequence. Please remember this. First, you have to do ARM, artificial rupture of membranes. If it is still inadequate after 30 minutes, then you will initiate oxytocin. Is that understandable? So, first you do ARM. You wait for 30 minutes. If the contractions are still inadequate, then you begin oxytocin. So, the sequence is important. The interval between the two is important. Usually, we will not do the two things simultaneously. MCQ for you for next level. Why should we not do ARM and oxytocin simultaneously? Why should we not do ARM and oxytocin simultaneously? Let me see who can give me the why because... Nowadays, we are also moving towards more conceptual questions in NEET PG, core basics in INICT, right? What is the answer? Tell me. It's the same Priya, prolonged, protracted, dystocia, slow progress, they are all same terms, okay? Don't worry. Very good. Sahil is absolutely right, proud of you. Yes, if you do them together, they will cause hyperstimulation and fetal distress so you never do it together there should be a gap of 30 minutes is it good for everyone hypotension is not the answer bache hyper stimulation is the answer okay perfect are you ready for the next graph everyone are you ready for the next graph yes so this would be the last part of graph and then we move on to labor care guide okay and importantly what are the differences between the two because that could be a potential mcq okay so, in this patient, I just wanted to show you that the intervention that we did was we started oxytocin for her and before that we did ARM for her. So, just like I taught you, we first did ARM, we waited for 30 minutes and then we have started oxytocin and we were gradually increasing the strength. Okay, so we were gradually increasing the strength of the oxytocin. Is that clear? Shallow. Let's go on to the next graph. Okay. So this is the next graph for all of you. Again, it is a very important MCQ. Neat PG people usually give this one in the exam. Sometimes they hand draw it. So it will not have many details, but it will ask you to pick up something. So, tell me what is happening in this graph, everyone. What is happening in this graph? Let's look at this. The patient came to us at 4 centimeters. Over a period of next 4 hours, she went to become 6 centimeters. Okay. 
and then what happened then after 6 to kuch hua hi nahi there is no change she remains at 6 cm look at this station this it was 3 by 5 it is still 3 by 5 it is still 3 by 5 no descent is also happening no dilatation is happening look at what has happened to the fetal heart rate distress yes there is distress look at this there is meconium staining look at molding it is 3 plus can you all appreciate yes put everything together there is slow progress in fact no progress of labor yes there is molding and all of this has started to cause what yes fetal distress so neat pg walo ne ye dikhaya tha aur kya kaha tha Batao kya ho raha hai CPD. What is happening here is there is definite cephalopelvic disproportion and she is almost going into arrest. Okay. But through this graph, I cannot really say it is arrest. So remember, arrest ka graph straight hota hai. So straight horizontal line means arrest which is what we saw in the Friedman curve as well hai na? so straight graph is arrest but kitni der hui hai arrest hue hai? one hour two hour three how much time I needed to say it is arrest I needed four hours because the contractions are adequate yes so I needed four hours abhi three hour hi hue hai now, who will tell me why did I not wait for one more hour? Because I said do cesarean after four hours of arrest. Why have I done a cesarean one hour early? Yes, very, very important. I told you we will wait for four hours only and only if the fetal heart rate is normal. But here at three hours itself, the fetal distress has developed. So, we will not wait for one more hour, right? And therefore, we have done a cesarean section. So, I told you what is the management? CS. Okay? And what would happen if I don't do a cesarean? Suppose I keep waiting. What will happen? <clears throat> obstructed labor. Arrest will eventually go into obstructed labor. Do you understand this? So, the most common reason, beta ji, okay, the most common reason, bache, for arrest, for obstructed labor is cephalopelvic disproportion. How do we get to know about CPD from the graph? Look at molding, okay, look at molding. So, everyone, will you be able to solve all partograph questions from now on? Yes, and I hope you will not do a mistake. Okay, so these are the various graphs, the normal ones, the protracted ones, the obstructed or arrest ones, right? We have covered the clinical application, we have covered the basics, we have covered even the tiniest thing of how to plot different, different parameters, okay? So now we move on to the latest version of uh, this. <coughs> Okay, so we are going to move on to the latest version which is the labor care guide, okay? Okay, Priya, nahi bache, when we talk about obstructed labor, which ring is formed? It is called as bandel's ring, okay? It is called as bandel's ring, alright? Yeah, pathological retraction ring, not constriction ring. So, Blandel's ring is also called as pathological retraction ring. Okay? So, pathological retraction. Kuch mein mushkil nahi hai. If you go one step at a time, assess one thing, then come to the other part of the graph, then go to the other part. If you know your core concepts well, you, it's very easy to interpret these graphs. Okay? Chalo. <coughs> Aur kya kar rahe hai? Ye ke labor charts to hai. Chalo. So now we are going to talk about the latest version as I said. What is labor care guide? Okay. So labor care guide is something that uh, the WHO gave, uh, you know, uh, it's not very new now. In 2021 it was rolled out, right? But it is less commonly used. 
So, labor care guide as I said is also called as what? Next generation partograph. So, sabse pehle to please know this that is the dusra naam hai next generation partograph. Thik hai? Now, the most important thing is to know what are the differences between the modified WHO partograph and the labor care guide. But before I go on to that because I will give it to you in writing. This is what I want you to see. Most importantly, the WHO labor care guide is now monitoring a lot of things, not just dilatation and descent. Okay. So, we are monitoring a lot of things through this labor care guide. So, it is a 360, uh, you know, approach to the patient. Now, please remember that there are seven sections in the labor care guide. Okay. There are seven sections. So, first one is the patient identification data. Okay. We are also monitoring about supportive care to the patient. Okay. Care of the baby section. Then there is the care of woman section. Then there is labor progress section. Then any medication that we could be giving to the patient. And then finally, what decisions are we taking? And now we call it as shared decision making because we discuss with the patient. Okay, so we discuss with the patient. So these are the seven columns. As I said, the first section is simply patient details. Name time, risk factors, when did membranes rupture, so those are patient details. Second, as I said, is supportive care. Now, in supportive care, they are talking about tiny details also, whether pain relief was done or not, whether there is a companion or not, fluids le rahi hai ki nahi le rahi hai, what is the posture of the patient, right? In the baby, again, we are seeing a lot of parameters like heart rate, amniotic fluid, but we are also now seeing the position of the baby. We are also now seeing capped. These were not there in the previous labor partograph, right? So now we are seeing position also. We are seeing capped also, right? And we are seeing molding also. Maternal indicators, so pulse, blood pressure, temperature, urine, which were seen previously as well. Contractions, we are seeing number of contractions and duration of contractions, okay? So number and duration. Then dilatation of the cervix again plotted by X, descent plotted by O that is no change. Then finally drugs which could mention the medicine and IV fluids and finally the shared decision making right. Now the beauty of it is that this labor care guide has a section called as alert section. Do you, are you all able to see this? There is an alert section. It not only tells you what is the alert. For example, N means there is no companion with the patient. So, it is an alert section. It is something to be worried about. We haven't given any pain relief. She is not taking fluids. She is in the supine position. She is not moving around. Right? So, these are all alert markers. Similarly, for fetal heart rate, they have told us less than 110 is alert, more than 160 is alert. And they have told you what to take as alert. What do you understand by P and T in fetal position? Posterior position or transverse position, okay? Then similarly, they have given you parameters everywhere. So, whenever you see the parameter reaches or crosses these values, you are supposed to be putting a alert there and you are supposed to take a decision about that parameter as well. Is that understandable? Yes. Now, the next important thing that I need you to see and then I will write down things for you so that you are able to grasp it, which is when we start plotting cervical dilatation, do you see the number here? What number do we see here? 5 centimeters. So, unlike the partograph where we were starting plotting at 4, in the labor care guide we start plotting at 5 centimeters, which means when does active phase begin? 5 centimeters, right? Now, please remember, aap bache confuse hote ho, ma'am, when should we mark 5, when should we mark 4? So, very simple. If they are using the term partograph, you stick to 4 because it is a PYQ. 
if they use labor care guide or they use next generation pathograph then you answer it as 5 cm is that understandable yes yes the acog guidelines are further different they are 6 cm we are talking about pathograph which is given by who tk is that clear now do you see these numbers which means what else do you not see here very importantly there is no alert line and no action line right so now in this labor care guide there is no alert line there is no action line yes instead what do you see here instead we see these numbers they are upper limits of normalcy for that dilatation which means a woman can stay 5 cm dilated for 6 hours but if it crosses 6 it is alert do you understand this do you understand similarly at 6 cm it is okay to be 5 hours but if it is more than 5 then it is abnormal so more than or equal to 5 so which means now we have upper limit of normal so that is what is the alert for us if she crosses that that means the progress is slow or the progress is abnormal is that clear so no alert line no action line we have upper limit for every centimeter of dilatation is that clear to everyone give me a thumbs up if this is clear to you so these are the major changes between the WHO partograph and the labor care guide. Now, this is a very, very potential question and therefore, I am going to write these differences for you uh, as a column. So, on one side, I am writing WHO partograph and on the other side, I am writing labor care guide. Because this, as I said, is a very potential MCQ, but all of you only know one difference. You keep answering that. That here we begin. Ab ab answer karoge, thik hai? Quickly tell me point number one. When do you begin plotting the graph? In modified partograph, 4 centimeters. And here the answer will be 5 centimeters. I will take your doubts towards the end, Nitya. Just hold on for a minute, okay? Second. I told you here there are fixed alert line and action line. Here there is no alert and action line. But instead, what did I tell you? Instead of this, we have evidence based time limit for each centimeter dilatation. Okay. So there is evidence based time limit for each centimeter of dilatation which is what is the alert column third difference iske baad se aapko nahi aata hai aapko ye do aate hain teesra bahut important hai please understand here when we were plotting uterine contractions we were plotting duration yes we were plotting number of contractions and we were plotting strength also yes Mild contraction, moderate contraction, adequate contraction. What are we plotting in the labor care guide? Are we plotting duration? Yes. Are we plotting frequency? Yes. But are we plotting strength? No. Why? Because WHO uh, considers that it is very difficult for different examiners to quantify the strength correctly. So, strength has been removed. We are only documenting number or frequency of contractions and we are documenting the duration of the contractions. Is that clear? Okay, fourth difference. Again, this is something you don't know and these are very, very potential MCQs. Please, one of the basic things that I didn't show and I'm not sure whether you picked up or not, so you will tell me. Do we plot second stage of labor in the labor care guide? Yes or no? The answer is yes. So, here even there is a column for second stage. Even the second stage is monitored. Whereas, here we do not have anything for second stage. 
okay let me show you the labor care guide look at this so this is the column in the labor care guide where we are supposed to monitor the second stage of labor which we were not doing in the who partograph is this clear is the fourth point clear to you okay what is the fifth difference the fifth difference is are we plotting supportive care in partograph no so there is no record of supportive care whereas in the labor care guide we are actually plotting all the details of supportive care from pain relief to companion to posture to fluids everything is being monitored and for everything we take action as well which is the last difference so in the original partograph or modified partograph we were only bothered about two things dilatation descent right so no requirement to respond to deviations other than what other than alert line and action line yes so our entire goal was has it reached alert line has it reached action line other than that we were not seeing anything but in the labor care guide not only are we seeing every detail we are supposed to take a decision about every deviation from normal that is why the alert column has been created right so we are going to highlight the deviation so deviation from normal is highlighted so usually hum log kya karte hain we take a red pen and circle the abnormality right so deviation is highlighted and a response what response you took is recorded for example my patient had pain so i have given her analgesia that is my response do you understand this so every single deviation is highlighted and a response to it is taken which is supposed to be documented right so these are the most important differences between what and what modified partograph and labor care guide yes last point jaise maine bola bachche shravan in the original partograph we are not bothered about anything other than has it reached alert line has it crossed alert line has it reached action line hai na यहाँ पे हम बोल रहे हैं कि हर एबनॉर्मेलिटी या अलर्ट सिग्नल पे हमने एक्शन लेना है यस फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ माई पेशेंट हैड पेन वॉट डिड आई डू राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ देर वॉज नो कंपेनियन वॉट रेस्पॉन्स डिड आई डू डिड आई ट्राई एंड रीच आउट टू हर सपोर्ट केयर और नॉट वॉट वॉज द रेस्पॉन्स आई एम सपोज टू रिकॉर्ड एवरी सिंगल डिविएशन दैट इज वाई द एंटायर अलर्ट कॉलम हैज बीन क्रिएटेड ठीक है इज दैट क्लियर टू एवरी वन perfect so these are the differences between the labor care guide and the partograph so uh, i hope the topic is easier for you now i hope uh, you will be doing all mcqs right whether they give you a graph or they ask you some basic questions or they go on to literal basics like what is station what is arrest what is hyper stimulation how do you plot this how do you plot that what is one square equal to right so please remember this uh, mostly bachche abhi tak labor care guide is not readily available so at most places we are still using actually the modified who partograph right but who says we should shift to labor care guide right so practically you will see modified partograph and that is why we still want you to know modified who partograph for your mcqs maine jaise kaha bahut simple rakho please confusion nahi add karo अगर पार्टोग्राफ लिखा है स्टिक टू दी मॉडिफाइड पार्टोग्राफ वाली चीजें ओनली इफ दे राइट नेक्स्ट जनरेशन पार्टोग्राफ और दे राइट लेबर केयर गाइड देन आंसर अकॉर्डिंगली ठीक है सो थैंक यू वेरी मच इट वॉज अ वंडरफुल वंडरफुल टाइम आई स्पेंड विद यू आई वॉज लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दिस सेशन आई होप आई कुड मेक अ डिफरेंस एंड आई वुड सिंपली से थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी दिस ऑपरचुनिटी टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ आई बिलीव uh strongly that you are the reason why we are able to do what we are able to do on a repeat mode right 
see uh, with clinics with patients it's it's very exciting every patient is different every surgery is different right but here i believe every student is different and you teach us a lot of things so we look forward to live sessions they are a whole new experience as compared to just recorded lectures where we are not able to see you so this is a pleasure where we are able to interact with you yes next 5 minutes i will just take any doubts that are there and then i will wind off with something that i would want to say from my side okay yes so somebody is asking me if there is a hyperstimulation even after turning off oxytocin and giving uterotonic uh, tocolytics should we do a cesarean absolutely yes bachche if there is fetal distress and it is not responding to stopping oxytocin and giving tocolytics then yes the management is cesarean so while you are doing all this you should get things for cesarean ready okay right nitya i hope i have solved your query bachcha okay and now what am i going to say uh please understand that no matter what has happened in the past no matter what your number of correct questions were no matter how many times you think you have failed none of this determine how far you can go in your future right so please let your past go away don't cling on to it right apne past ko jaane do uh forgive yourself for not knowing better at that time ऐसे ना आगे जब हम बढ़ जाते हैं तो पीछे सोचने में हम हमेशा ज्यादा इंटेलिजेंट हो जाते हैं कि मुझे ऐसे नहीं ऐसे करना चाहिए था राइट एंड दैट्स वेयर गिल्ट कम्स इन एंड व्हेन गिल्ट कम्स इन इट इज एक्चुअली अ ट्रैप इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेट आउट ऑफ दैट गिल्ट सर्कल सो यू हैव टू टेल योर सेल्फ दैट आई फॉरगिव माय सेल्फ फॉर नॉट नोइंग बेटर एट दैट टाइम उस वक्त मेरे को इतना ही आता था एंड आई ट्राई टू डू माय बेस्ट सो योर गोल हैज टू बी दैट नाउ let me become my better version every single day right and if you keep doing that one day after another day you know you will reach great heights you will fulfill your dreams and you will have a story to tell yes each one of us have a story and aap log bahut bade bade film stars ko dekhte ho hai na sharukh khan salman khan rithik roshan and various female actors as well you know um, and you look up to them but do you realize that there are so many younger children class 10 class 12 who look up to you who want to be like you you are the heroes and you know uh, for them you have already achieved a lot so acknowledge that aur ye socho ki jab main itna aage aa sakta hu to aur aage bhi definitely ja sakta hu apni life ke aap hi hero ho और आपको नहीं पता बहुत सारे और लोगों के लिए भी आप हीरो हो योर पेशेंस ऑफ फ्यूचर पेशेंस ऑफ करंट वो स्कूल के बच्चे हु लुक अप टू यू हु वांट टू बी इन योर शूज राइट इस साल देर आर रिकॉर्ड एडमिशंस फॉर नीट यूजी एग्जाम यस सो डू यू सी दैट यू आर लिविंग दैट ड्रीम विद सो मेनी अदर स्टूडेंट्स हैव राइट नाउ सो आप ऑलरेडी एक ड्रीम जी रहे हो यू आर ऑलरेडी अ हीरो please don't feel guilty of some things that may not have been the best in the past but believe that the future holds the best for each one of you there is immense immense that god has to offer you just have to move forward and ask for it there is immense in the universe koi kami nahi hai sabko milega but you have to move ahead agar aage hi nahi badhoge to koi darwaza nahi khulega है ना और जो चीजें वेट कर रही हैं वो वेट ही करती रहेंगी सो यू विल ऑल प्रॉमिस दैट यू विल मूव अहेड फ्रॉम योर साइड वन स्टेप एट अ टाइम यस यू विल कीप बिकमिंग योर बेटर वर्जन वन स्टेप एट अ टाइम एंड देन फाइनली यू विल डेफिनेटली हैव अ स्टोरी टू टेल ऑन दैट नोट आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू से गुड लक लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ लव लॉट्स ऑफ गुड विशेज टू ईच वन ऑफ यू आई बिलीव दैट ईच वन ऑफ यू इज सुपर केपेबल एंड यू आर गोइंग टू मेक अस प्राउड राइट So thank you so much for being who you are and as i said you are already high achievers you just want more from life so go ahead and take it it's all there for you okay lots of love bye bye everyone